I just came out of that one room. I have some backlight here, but here are these, again, frescoes, or at least art on the walls here. I'm just amazed that, you know, that they have lasted these long. I'm not sure quite what they are. It would probably just take some time. This one looks like it has a date, um, 1500. So they're just all down this this uh, hall here. This is gated off. This is a um, this is the Margaretin oh Capel Margaretin Capel. So it must be some little place where. So again, there's that deal, and this is all richly decorated. They have they have this gate here. Um, there's wire and deal to keep birds and what have you. So again, there's. I have a thing that these little things in the side of the wall were either for some, like candles or whatever, to provide illumination, and then maybe that thing down there that, that is like for water, for the priest to anoint themselves when they are done uh, coming in here to worship or make some kind of um, prayer. I, I don't know, I'd have to do further research on this, but again, this is just kind of walking around here. Here we have kind of the inner court come out. Beautiful day. And then here's the, here's this kind of inner courtyard. There's the main steeple. That part of the building or the church we weren't able to go into. And uh, anyway, just simply wonderful. So it, it completely circles this, and so the the monks and them would. Um, this would be probably a place where they would come, sun themselves, or they would talk with each other in their solitude. Sometimes they would not speak, but they would have. Uh, I saw a placard that showed how they would communicate um, with their hands when they were not speaking so they could communicate each other with each other and not probably offend God in some manner of... So we're coming in. This looks like it's been... I'm not sure of the state of its preservation. Looks like there was something here one time. It's in various state of repair or... You just don't know how much of that has, has changed um, in 600 years. So it's, it's rather difficult to know. Much of the doors here are shut. So this is a rect, this is probably a rectory. Again, we have these deal. I hear some water gurgling over here, so we're going to walk. Oh, this is the Brunel Capel. I wonder if this is where... Oh, it's just like a... I wonder if this is like their water source. So they would come in here, as it goes out there, and here, and as it comes in. I'd have to, I'd have to look that word up and see what... Brunenen Kapel is. I see that it's about 4.30, 3.30, so I need to be heading back, I need to study. I chose not to go to the... Um, I'm just kind of looking around here. Well, this goes out this side. Here is a, kind of the representation of the whole kind of a schematic. The cloister all going from 1466 to 1502. And, um, Here was a court art we were just looking at. There's a little garden. This was over here, the nave. I have a picture of this. This is all under construction. So I walked around this. And um, right now I am over where I'm at. I think I am. I think I'm right in here somewhere because I can go out or. It's somewhere right in here, but I, I think I'm kind of standing. I don't know where I'm. Oh, this is the layout when it was, when it was there, because this 
This goes right outside. There's nothing like this outside. So I can go right outside. But again, you'll notice there's this little nave here. So there would have been a statue or something. So anyway, I'm going to take some pictures of the um, these presentation elements. This is kind of cool. I don't know what the date on that is. Um, something 69. I don't think it's 1069. I have to do some research. It's a rather interesting second digit there. These doors are simply wonderful. They're all curved and arched. This is all stone too. So they would key, they would arch these because they could put a keystone in at the top and not have to worry about um, reinforcing the, the top. So they would they would do that. So here we are, close to Babo in 900 years. Wonderful panels here. This talks a lot about just the history of the, of the monasteries in Germany and the different things. Here's the thing where they their sign language, um, what their day would consist of. Um, what they would eat, the food. Um, this is was, this was talking about the Benedictine cloisters, perhaps how they were laid out, um, plans. There's just a general history. This is the room I was in just now where it has this, those are those benches, and you just can't, it just the, the detail in the carving is just simply amazing. Here we have, uh, it looks like talking about the cloister of Blauborn, talking about money, um, different things for um, weight, um, measures. I'm trying to think what this is. So there's gold, cheese, um, it must be different commodities or whatever in the price. Pfund, shilling, hella. Um, over there it gives you a breakdown of the money situation. So. Here's a deal talking about the reforms here. You can hear some people carrying on. This is kind of different things that were built at different stages. Um, the abbots, I believe. Here you have, uh, I saw this, this, this particular thing right here is the, it looks like it's for an abbot, his tomb. Here's another portrait of an abbot in the uh, altar there. So it was very, very fascinating. Anyway, just more of the same. This is, this is, I think, the cloister here. Um, I'm not sure the date on it. I think it's 1630. That uh, pretty much ends my tour here. Again, it's just wonderful. Here was another stone. I don't think I got this one. I think I just took a picture. The Ulrich Rattengatte uh, from Ulm, or something with Aus Ulm, maybe from Ulm. So, all right, that pretty much wraps it up. I need to find a bathroom. Gotta go.